I like to pretend that I'm a very organized person, so when I realized I didn't have any way to organize all of my shoes, I build a shoe rack so that I can organize things. This is more or less based on a This Old House episode where they made a shoe rack. Uh, they just use pocket holes for it, which is absolutely a-okay. I've gone with a different approach and a few more refinements here and there, but this is still the basic thing. Uh, it's a rarity for me in that I've just done it on the fly. I haven't spent months planning it. My entire set of <laughs> notes is this, uh, a few sketches on a piece of paper. So there are no plans available for this, but if people are super duper interested, I guess I could digitize what I have drawn up. Now, if I'm being perfectly honest, I went to buy a shoe rack, but the one I wanted was not in stock. So I'm kind of building this out of spine, which means I really need to use up a lot of offcuts to kind of justify it. So this is where a lot of my larger offcuts end up being. And thankfully this isn't an overly large project. It won't use that much material. It's really just the top that it's gonna use a fair bit of perhaps fresh stock, but otherwise we should be able to get all the legs and the rails out of pieces like this will make perfect leg blanks. They're big enough for 40 by 40 stock and it's roof sawn so it'll look nice anyway. With at least three faces plain and square on those pieces, I want to cut them down to more manageable sizes, closer to the final dimension. You could obviously do this on the miter saw, but I'm gonna do this over on the table saw. You might say, hey Paul, that's a 1600 mil length. How are you gonna cut that down into 600 millimeter pieces on a crosscut sled? This only goes up to about 500 mil. Oh, I've got a little secret for this crosscut sled. It has an extension arm, it's an aluminum extrusion, the block on one end that just holds the flip stop, slides onto some uh, insert nuts and tightens down from the front of the face. There's just some bolts that go through. And then that's rock solid and I still have full use of my flip stop. This is unapologetically a very domino heavy build, but if you don't have a domino, that's okay. The This Old House version of the shoe rag didn't use any dominoes, they used pocket screws, so you can absolutely do that if that's your jam. If you have a plunge router and a table saw, you can very easily do mortise and tenon using that, and I have a video explaining how to do that. If you still wanna do floating tenons, last year you might remember I released a video on making a floating tenon jig called the Nopano. This is the updated version of it, Still working on a few bits and pieces. Plans for the first one were free and the plans for the second one will be free. This has a few interesting differences. It has a modular table system. This one here came in handy for making non-tenon based templating things, holding them vertically. I'll get into that another time. Either way, the Nopano version one or version two will allow you to make mortises in grain and side grain so that you can make floating tenons. You can either use your own floating tenon stock, which I have a video on, or Fez Tools dominoes. So if you want to take out that part of the equation and just buy them off the shelf, you can do that. So lots of options. So you don't really need to be all up in arms about someone using a domino as there are ways around it. As you can see, the domino really makes framework like this go together very, very quickly. Uh, it is more or less structurally done. It needs the shelves put in obviously, and the top, but structurally is kind of done at this point. 
these decorative elements here, mission style, vertical rails, I'm not, vertical styles, really not sure what the correct term for it is, but it's very uh, common in mission style, craftsman style furniture. These are just a temporary placeholder. These are offcuts of offcuts to visualize it a little bit better for myself as I'm kind of making this up as I'm going along. I have an offcut here that I'll use for that. This is uh, clearly from something I've resawn and I've kept the offcut. I probably was gonna turn this into veneer at some stage, uh, but this will work perfectly. I'll make it about eight millimeters thick, about 40 millimeters wide. And with the four or even five millimeter domino, I'll be able to attach those rails, the vertical styles to the short side rails, top and bottom with the four millimeter domino and they're purely decorative, they don't serve any real function, so I don't have to worry about whether that's adding enough strength or not. Alternatively, uh, small mortise and tenon would work just fine. Might be pushing it for dowels, uh, or just half lap into the back of these rails would work just fine too. For the slats that the shoes will actually sit on, uh, I don't need a lot of material per slat. They'll be about 40 mil wide, 275 long, so they're relatively short, and probably 15 mil thick. Problem is I'm just gonna need quite a few of them. Probably 20, 25, I haven't really worked it out. So we'll go with 25 and see how that works out spacing wise. I have this old uh, stretcher from my old outfeed table, which is about the right dimensions, a little bit thick, has some slots that we use for the tabletop clips, which I can just face downwards and that'll be perfectly fine. But I've only got two of these and that's not gonna make 20 rails. I have some other material, these pieces here, uh, they'll work as well. But I also have this old tabletop. This is from a desk or well, years ago now. It's not quite long enough before the curve starts for the bench top, bench seat. I'm not sure how best to describe that, but this will be perfect for ripping down to turn into slats. So what I might do is uh, rip this down a little bit, then I can start thicknessing it down, getting it about the right size material. This jig idea was taken from a French man named Boris and used as a cam to quickly lock the piece into position so I can use the domino on the ends. It only requires one hand to operate, meaning I don't have to switch the domino off. So this is the spacing for the slats for the shelves that I want, roughly. But how did I get to this point? At this stage, I'm still just winging it, so I'm just making dimensions up as I go along. Figured out what my spacing, what I wanted for my spacing, that was 25 millimeters. And from there, that's just determined everything else. So take these slats away. So the way to go about it is find the middle point of the shelf apron. So it is eight, nine, six wide, so that's four, four, eight. Now everything will be based off this line here. So we'll have one slat that goes bang in the middle. So from either side of that middle line, I need to measure the width of the slats, which is 40 millimeters plus my spacing, 25 millimeters. So every 65 millimeters, there'll be another mortise. You can go both ways. That way the excess space, as it doesn't work out perfectly evenly, is on the two ends. It will be even, 
but it also won't be noticed because it'll be at the end. No one will really see that. So if I'm off a little bit on my lines, it doesn't really matter because I've clamped all four shelf pieces together. Now I can take the lines from one and transfer it across to all the boards. So hopefully everything will line up, even if it's slightly incorrect. So this is just a dry fit. All the joinery, except for the shelves, is cut. I've had a bit of trouble figuring out exactly where the shelves should go because I don't think there's one necessarily universal best answer for the heights. For us, my wife and I, these are kind of the taller shoes we use, boots. Uh, they will be on the bottom rack and then the top rack will have shorter shoes. So I've used them to gauge the actual dimensions for what I need. I've also raised the bottom shelf up so it's roughly in line with the top of the bottom apron. I'll probably make those flush. Uh, the reason for having this as kind of high as possible is so that I can get a broom or a vacuum cleaner or something underneath it to sweep up stuff. For interest's sake, it is about 260 between these two shelves and 190 between the top shelf and the top apron. If you leave the shoes in, you can certainly get a little bit more that's no problem, and these boots come out no problem whatsoever. For us, I think this is about the right way to do it, but if you're making one yourself, grab some shoes, you know what you wear, it's the easiest way to actually gauge relatively to what you've got. A simple right angle square clamp jig thingy with the center line marked allows me to line up the domino to position the cut. This jig is offset from the line previously drawn by 10 millimeters. About eight of the slats unfortunately had a previous domino or biscuit exposed since they were cut from the tabletop and other scraps. The easiest way to repair that was to create a dado, three millimeters thick, but most of the height of the slat. I could then rip a small oversized filler piece and glue them onto each of those slats. Once the glue dried, it was pretty simple to just hand plane everything flush. It's not a perfect repair job, but given the location, it's more than good enough. Before finishing glue up, the surfaces have to be prepared. Burn marks are scraped or planed off, and then all edges receive an eighth inch roundover treatment. This breaks the edge, but doesn't give an overly aggressive roundover appearance like a larger radius would. Sanding 26 slats would take a while, if it wasn't for this handy jig. It's just a fixed fence with a wedge clamp made from 6mm plywood, but it allows me to gang 3 slats up at a time without the clamps getting in the way or vibrating loose. Before the actual glue up, I glue the dominoes into the rails to make the floating tenons no longer float. While the glue dried on the slants, I worked on the bench top. A 45mm thick board resawn down to 20mm gives a nice book matched appearance.
Once dried, it's ripped to the final width, just enough to have an overhang of 10mm on both sides. If you have a slider, it'd be the easiest way to cross cut a panel like this, but I'll have to just slum it with a track saw. One edge is trimmed square, then the entire panel is flipped and measured off that first edge to the length I actually want. Two coats of Osmos Polyex is rolled onto everything. With so many parts, using a roller is the easiest method, short of HVLP, and unfortunately I just don't have the space to set up a spray booth, or the compressor to run HVLP. So now I have all the fun of peeling off all the tape from the uh, tenons, and I'm going to do the first of several glue ups. I'm doing this in sub-assembly, so I'll be doing two end assemblies and finally the shelves that join everything together and you might ask okay why did you bother finishing before glue up and why would you make it even slower by doing even more glue ups than what's required first one for why I finished first there's so many surfaces there are 26 individual rails so getting slats for the shelves so getting in between each of them is going to be a difficult task. They're only spaced, I think it's 25 mil apart, so getting something in there to evenly finish everything just isn't going to be easy to do. And it would be a high stressful situation to actually do that. As for the glue ups, why do that in separate steps? Pretty much the exact same reason. There would be 52 mortises just in the two shelves. And if I hadn't have pre-glued in the tenons, the dominoes, that would have been 104 uh, mortises that needed glue in them, and that's before you get to the frame. So more or less, it's a matter of reducing stress by dividing it into small parts. To hold the top on, and because I totally did not forget to do this all before glue up, I'm making clips that will be two countersunk holes are drilled onto one face, then one hole perpendicular to the first face. That hole is oversized, so there is wriggle room for the screw to allow for wood movement. Spacers, shims and clamps help me hold the bracket in position down to the aprons while I drill the pilot hole, then drill the screw down.
The large washer head screw allows the screw to pass through the hole, but still pull the block down. This went together fairly easily and it's fairly customizable depending on what sort of shoes you and your family have. So if you don't have boots, you might even be able to get three rows in here for some sandals or something like that. But, but for us, this works really quite nicely.